So what's for dinner? Okay, we, um, we are often asking each other, what's for dinner? What are we gonna make tonight? Well, we kind of get tired of making the same old thing, but we have a few favorites that we get off of a pre-cooked chicken from Sam's Club. You can choose whichever one you want from whatever store you want, but that's our personal favorite. And today we're gonna share some of those recipes with you. large solar system so we can use the instant pot when we're boondocking. If you don't have a solar system you can always have a generator power and a lot of people have RV parks, stay in RV parks and that's fine too. Um, but we love our, our instant pot because it allows us the versatility to use it for several different meals. Okay, time for dinner and we're gonna use up the last of our Sam's Club chicken. It's one of our favorites because we can make several meals off of it. Let me find the plug. There it is. Okay, turn that around. Turn that around. So today, we've already stripped the chicken carcass of its meat and we're getting ready to put it in the pressure cooker and I'll explain why. So this Sam's Club chicken, we have gotten three to five meals off of it, or there's the two of us. Depending on how many mouths we're feeding, we can, we can do three to five meals. And that's $4.98 for the Sam's Club chicken, and it, it goes a long ways with us. I'm going to cover this with water. Okay, so I'm covering the chicken meat, the bones I should say, with water. I'm going to cook it for, pressure cook it for an hour. If you wanted to pressure cook for a half an hour, you would get chicken broth. But we cook it for an hour and we get bone broth. And we use the bone broth for the chicken and dumplings or we'll make rice perlo. Okay, so I'm gonna put the lid on here, tighten it up, make sure it's on sealing, pressure cook right there for one hour, and it will automatically start. Okay, so when we first get this Sam's Club chicken, we will have the chicken and a vegetable and uh, a starch the first night. Okay, we'll eat it warm. The second night, Ron will cut off the thighs and chop them up and add it to a frying pan, uh, skillet, I should say. We're not gonna fry it. We're gonna heat it up with some fajita seasoning and we'll sprinkle that with some jalapenos and cheese over top of some nachos and we'll put that in the oven for a few minutes and we'll have hot nachos. Uh, another meal that we'll get off of this is we can chop up some of the white meat and we'll either make a blackened chicken salad or a chicken Caesar salad. So we get several meals off of here and by the time we're done eating this chicken we're ready to eat something else. <laughs> so this is a little trick that I learned from my sister-in-law, my, my lovely sister-in-love. I love her. Um, we have some old tortillas that are getting a little bit dried out. So what we'll do is we'll cut these in strips and we'll take these, add them to a bag that has some self-rising flour in it. We'll make sure there's flour coating on the tortilla strips and we'll drop these in boiling water in our chicken broth when it's done and season it and we'll have chicken and dumplings and this is really good i mean you can't tell that it's not a real dumpling from anything else it's just pre-made <laughs> 
All right, we get these uh, tortillas and put them on a cutting board and just take a knife and cut them into, you know, approximately about one inch or one and a quarter inch strips like this with a good sharp uh, edge knife. And, uh, and then I usually cut them in half, which I'll show you in just a moment when I get them all, this, uh, this one cut. I'm just take them here and try to cut them in halves or thirds. So they're not too hard to spoon up when you're ready to eat them. All right. Alrighty, after we get the tortillas in the bag, we just take and scoop in a little uh, self-rising flour. Doesn't really take a lot. Zip it up. You can leave the air in the bag just so it kind of makes it a little easier shaking up and you just get the all the tortillas coated with the self-rising flour. Now after the broth is done and we've taken the bones out and all that, you can see that the tortilla has just a little bit of flour coating on the tortilla and that is just enough to thicken the broth just a little and just makes it really rich and delicious. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Terry had set the Instapot to pressure cook for an hour because we wanted to first of all create a bone broth rather than just a chicken broth. So the bones were thoroughly pressure cooked and as a result, the bones are very flexible and, and normally a dog should not eat chicken bones because they can splinter and he can have medical problems as a result. But these bones are that tender. Look how they just break. And I can take a leg bone, which I already have put in a bowl here, and look at that. So he loves these bones and that's why we do it primarily for the hour instead of 30 minutes. Now once you have these bones cooked like that one of the problems you face is that the bones fall all apart especially the smaller bones and you've got to get that out of your broth so we take a slotted spoon like this one and depending on how well you debone the meat before you put it in here is how much picking of the meat you're going to need to do off the bone. We try to pretty much debone most of the meat that's usable. Uh, every once in a while we'll find a morsel that we can use, but really most of it is just going to go in Samson's bowl, which he's whining. You probably hear him whining as, as I'm doing this because he has that enhanced sense of smell and he loves food. So uh, I'm just looking it over to see if there's any good lean meat. Woo, that's still pretty hot. Now, the mo meat that we deboned off of this ahead of time we've left in the fridge because we don't want to just overcook it so it's already cooked from sam's club before we got it so now what we're going to do after we debone get all these bones out we're going to add back the amount of meat that we want to our broth to the amount of broth that we want to keep for our uh, dumplings that we're going to cook tonight here's a few pieces of white meat that i've been able to get off and uh so, anyway, Samson wants me to leave as much as possible. So we just swoop around in the pan. There's a piece of bone. That, well, you know, it's kind of like counting this is for us and this is for him. <laughs> and he, loves, he likes all the this is for him stuff. Well, as I, once I get all the bones out of this broth, it's obvious that this is going to be more broth than what we're going to need for one meal tonight. So we're going to take and pour some of this up, let it cool to room temperature, and then we'll freeze it for future use. Well, we have this uh, whole bowl full of bones for our, our buddy Samson, and he's all excited about getting them. And you can see again how tender they, whoops, oh. he's going to rescue that one from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, he loves to eat these things and they're just like eating candy, eat candy, about bit my finger off. A little excited there, aren't you, Samson? Look at all this good food for his whole Samson. He's all excited. Now what we do is we put some of this in a Ziploc bag usually. And then each day I'll put a little bit in his food bowl along with his dry food. And he thinks he's getting dessert for each meal. Well, we've already poured some of our uh, deboned chicken meat that we had chopped up, some of the dark meat. But I had 
when I pulled the breast off, it was some fairly large pieces, and I don't want to put the entire bag. I want to save some of this for an additional meal. So I just took a knife and I'm just kind of hand cutting some of it so the pieces aren't so large since we're going to have it in with our dumplings. Oops, there's a little piece of bone. Take that out. Now, Terry, if you can get the camera here to look down and see that the, the broth is boiling. Once that broth is back boiling again and heating, the meat's heating up, we're going to start putting our, you go ahead and stir it and make sure everything is good. We're going to start putting our tortilla in to make our dumplings. You can see that they're lightly floured. You just drop them in there and then you just take and stir them as you're going uh, just to make sure they don't stick to each other until they can get completely wet. Once they're wet, they really won't stick with one another once the broth has coated them. So the and you're going to see this broth transform from just a pure liquid water type state to just a slightly thicker broth which makes it really yummy. Now the question always comes up how long do you cook these dump these tortilla strips to make your dumplings? Well what you have to do you know somebody's got to sacrifice themselves to be the tester so you have to taste test, taste test them. So that's what we do. I think that's enough in there? Yeah. All right. So we won't quite use them all then. All right. Now we just let them sit there and cook. I think you got it stirred well enough, my dear. We'll let them cook until they're tender. They'll start boiling again. And uh, in about five minutes, we'll check to see how tender they are. So. We'll come back in five minutes. Okay, well, we're going to dip out the first dumpling. Yeah, I think it still needs to cook a little bit longer, but I'm going to get it out and let it cool for just a moment, and then I will taste it and see if it's ready. Now, I have not added the salt and pepper, so it's going to be rather bland right now. Well, it's not too far away. A couple of minutes, and that will be ready. All right, we're gonna add some salt and pepper, and uh, you know you just need to add a little, and and then just check how much you've added. And uh, now you know, for me, I like lots of pepper, so I have to be careful because Terry doesn't like quite as much as I do. That'll be probably enough for now. I'll stir it a little bit. All right, it's looking good, isn't it? Good old southern tradition. Chicken and dumplings. Well, let me get a dip fish another one out here. Let's see if that's, if that's ready yet. Mm. Almost there, not quite. Going to need a little more salt. Not really much is coming out of there. <laughs> All right. Now the dumplings are almost done. And what I wanted to show you is how the flour thickened that broth just a little. It really makes it yummy. So, uh, see these good dumplings in here? You see they're not sticking to each other. They're getting nice and tender. It saves all that time of rolling out all-purpose flour uh, to, make, uh, to, to make dumplings when you can just use tortilla, uh, flour tortillas, and it's all done for you. Just cut it with those strips. Great, a great substitute. Makes it so much easier. Dinner's ready. Bye.